Hey, welcome. My name is Markus Kuppe and I'm a principal engineer at Microsoft. Today I'm going to talk about what I call shift, shift left testing, the idea of expanding testing to the earliest, the design stage of software development. Why? Let me start with a story about my first day at university some 20 plus years ago. At the meet and greet, the older students wanted to show us what our future careers would look like. What does it mean to be a software engineer? So they divided the room into teams and assigned the task of collectively building a bridge that could span this gap between two tables. The teams quickly decided who builds what. Ramp, pillar, beams. And then we executed like crazy. Gluing, rubber banding, cutting. And some 30 minutes later, we came together to assemble the bridge from its parts. Which we found required a lot more gluing, rubber banding and cutting. But ultimately, we managed to assemble the bridge and we passed the acceptance test. A toy car successfully went over the bridge and then the bridge collapsed. Since then, however, become way more efficient, a way more efficient engineer. Figuratively speaking, I learned to use superglue and operate Kevlar-infused scissors. So bridges don't come crashing down. However, I also reflect that I also realized that this exercise wasn't really software engineering. Why? Because in software, one person in the room would have written a bridge design document, followed by a group design review, after which we would have grabbed our building materials, the steel and the concrete, we would have marched out of the door down to the river to lay foundations. Let's get things done. We might have run into the problem that Team B started laying foundations two miles downstream and now we have to build the bridge diagonally across the river. But okay, minor inconvenience, nothing we cannot patch later. However, in truth, I ask you, have you ever observed that fundamental design issues were successfully corrected without starting over, without building a new, a second bridge next to the old? I haven't. So how come that our brother and sister engineering disciplines don't run into this problem over and over again? Why are the rivers clustered with bridges? Is it because we software engineers build something truly different, something for the virtual and not the physical world? I don't think so. The difference is that other engineering disciplines make extensive use of modeling. Take this bridge model that civil engineers put it into a wind tunnel to study its behavior, the bridge's behavior, long, long, long before laying foundations. Can we do this too and use modeling to bridge the gap between our imprecise design documents and the expensive to build system implementation? I say yes. There are design languages meant for modeling, meant for prototyping with which, by the way, the prototype doesn't get shipped as the product gets relabeled as the product because we ran out of time. One of these languages is TLA+, the Temporal Logic of Actions, invented by Turing Award winner Leslie Lamport. You can think of TLA+, as a highly expressive and precise design language that's based on math. It's rooted in math. And it's meant for concurrent and distributed systems. Also, it comes with a wind tunnel, a wave generator, and other tools to test our designs. It's been used successfully throughout the industry, with perhaps the most popular success story coming out of our main competitor in the cloud market. AWS used TLA Plus when building its foundational services, um, such as DynamoDB. In 2014, engineers concluded in a CACM article that using TLA Plus prevented serious but subtle bugs from reaching production, end quote. Fast forward to last year, and TLA Plus still got a shout out at reInvent. But don't trust our competitors selling you our products. Instead, here's my experience. I work on the TLA Plus tools, the wind tunnel of TLA Plus, if you will. And when I wanted to make a tool more scalable, I discovered 
very high threat contention in one of the tool's core data structures. So I thought this is really easy. Just roll up your sleeves markers and change the code, rewrite the code by refactoring this one global lock with lock stripe, the technique of using n locks in place of one, which allowed me to play it safe because you don't mess with the system's correctness with lock stripe. On this side, I thought I would refactor a few other design issues in the implementation. So I thought, because during functional testing, I started seeing corner cases where things didn't really work out, uneven data distribution and so on, and also scalability saturated, even with lock striping. Okay, at this point, I figured that if one lock doesn't cut it and locks don't do it, well, zero locks are likely the answer. However, earlier I shied away from lock free because as you might all know, it's notoriously difficult to get right. With TLA Plus, however, I modeled a lock free design in which I also exploited various domain specific properties that I couldn't make use of in the earlier code level refactoring. Then I exhaustively tested the model with TLA Plus to weed out any bugs. And only then, only then did I walk out of the door down to the river and made the investment and converted the model into code. And even though the implementation, the code, has ridiculously low test coverage and there wasn't any code review whatsoever, the code has been running in production for several years now without problems. I never went back in there and had to fix patch something. This experience ultimately convinced me about modeling with TLA Plus. You can find the extended version of the story on YouTube. So let me end. Patching design bugs in production is a lie. In practice, we pile workaround on workaround until the whole system collapses under its own weight. And we have to start over and build the second bridge next to the old one. To avoid this design bug death spiral, software engineering has to adopt the learnings from other engineering disciplines and integrate modeling into the early stages of software development. TLA Plus is such a modeling language and it's meant for concurrent and distributed systems and it has this track record of delivering results. It pays off. And we, at so uh, we software engineer at Microsoft should apply it broadly and wide widely to build reliable systems. Let's shift, shift left and also test our designs long, long, long before we write code. Please reach out to me and learn more about TLA Plus and the other formal methods developed at the Rice Group. Thank you.